Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 24th of July and it's day 10 of 2016 on my allotment. <laughs> well, if you're sitting there and wondering why this is only day 10, then I mean, it does prove a point actually that it really is some time since you've seen a video from me. It's over a month. And uh, apart from when uh, I was in hospital, this is the longest that I've left it. Uh, to uh, see a video. Now, the reason is that suddenly everything started to get really busy at work and I very much found myself with limited time to be here at the allotment. The time that I was here, I had to concentrate on doing things, but there's also been a long time when I've just not been able to get up here at all. We went on holiday in the middle as well, which meant that I couldn't be here. So uh, this allotment has uh, very much had to uh, fend for itself. That really does bring me up to a point that I want to talk about today, which is that the Back to Eden method, one of the things that it makes big claims about is that it reduces the need for watering. And the way that it works is that the wood chips form a layer and as water falls it absorbs them and then it lets it go into the ground. What it also does is, is it provides a layer above the soil and so that the soil remains moist. And as I've been going around through this process, I mean, I've pulled the wood chips back and certainly underneath the ground is moist. So that does seem to work. Now, the question is whether it would remain moist and whether the plants would continue to get the water that they needed uh, over an extended period, which has been a month. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, I want to show you today. The other thing is weeds. Now, the way that that works is, again, you've got the, the layer of wood chips. Now, most weeds have quite shallow roots and they can't germinate and they can't grow inside the wood chips. So that's how it stops most weeds coming through that have shallow roots. The other thing it does is block out sunlight from the soil so that the weeds that have deeper roots that doesn't get the sunlight so that they don't come through. So that being the case, let me show you what a Back to Eden allotment looks like that's been left with nothing going on for a month. <laughs> well, if you look in here, right, well, this is where the majority of the damage is. And you can see that this is my onions and we've got onions that are growing up quite nicely actually, uh, looking really good. But you can see that the weed that nothing has stopped, and I don't believe anything will stop, is mare's tail. And you can see that all around this onion bed. It's growing amongst them, it's growing through the wood chips, and so mare's tail definitely is a weed that you can't suppress with wood chips. If I now zoom back a bit, you'll see that actually, mare's tail is pretty much the only weed that's come through in this particular bed. If I zoom in on what is actually the path, so I mean, this was cleared the same as every other part of the bed. I've got my onions on this side, and then these are my onions from sets and my garlic on this side. Now, if you look in there, you can see that the mare's tail really has gone crazy these last couple of weeks. And that's what I expected. But every other weed that you would expect to be coming through has been suppressed by the wood chips. So I'm thinking that this is actually a bit of a victory. And what I've come back to could have been so much worse. There is one other culprit, which is the bindweed and I was expecting that as well. So wood chips won't keep down bindweed and it won't keep down mare's tail. Now both of those have very, very deep roots. And so anything that has deep roots, the wood chips doesn't look to me as if it's going to suppress. Anything that has shallow roots, so many of the other weeds that you know, we, we take out the garden, it does.
because what it looks to me is that they can't get a foothold that the layer of wood chips is just too much for them. They can't root inside the wood chips, and if they go further down, they don't have the energy to break through. So it looks to me as if that is the science behind the wood chips, and based on this experience, those are the weeds that I can eliminate with this. I've got to think of something else with the bindweed, and I've got to think of something else uh, with the mare's tail. Cooch grass, I would imagine, will also um, come through, although I did really dig out the cooch grass from here, so that's not giving me too much of a problem. Here's a better look at the bindweed coming through the wood chips. Uh, as you can see, it's even started to flower, so uh, I dug this really well, actually, and uh, it's still there, so you never get all of it. Um, I've just got to get out what I can, but it's going to be a challenge getting underneath the wood chips in this area. And uh, I've thought carefully about that and I do have a plan. The really annoying thing that I've come back to is that something has been digging in here. Now they've been digging a lot, which either suggests something that is very prone to dig uh, or very large that has uh, decided to dig a bit, but they've gone crazy in my onions. And there's two areas here where the wood chips have been completely turfed back and some of my garlic has been trampled down. One of them's actually been pulled out. They've uh, tried to have a look at it and then decided they didn't want it, which I suppose is the biggest insult of all. I suspect rabbits. And so what my job today is, once I've weeded this, is that what I need to do is to reapply some wood chips to keep the cover on. Um, otherwise this ground is gonna dry out. So uh, it is something that still needs constant attention. Um, the rabbits are there and they're thinking to themselves, yeah, that's nice food. So uh, they're gonna help themselves to it. So uh, yeah, I've got to get stuck in on this. Here you can see sweet corn. Now this hasn't been weeded. It hasn't been watered. Uh, all I did was put loads of muck down, a layer of cardboard over, I've covered it in, it's got to be six to eight inches of wood chips. And then I pulled the wood chips back, planted the sweet corn, put the wood chips back around them, and it's just been left. And this is what it looks like with a month of doing nothing. I'm not going to pretend that there aren't weeds. There's my uh, little friend, mare's tail, that's growing through. But that's pretty much it. Um, I've got a small problem with a bit of comfrey that's growing up through everything, but there again, nothing stops comfrey. So mare's tail and comfrey are the only two things that are interfering with these crops. So that's, in my book, another massive vote in favour of the Back to Eden gardening method. There is some not so good news, which is my beans. Now I had problems with beans last year. And before anybody says, I don't think that this is an issue with the wood chips because the beans have actually been nibbled and this is deer that's doing this. And I've only got one or two <laughs> plants that are even gonna get to the top of the pole. They're not there yet, this is July, and they're not at the top of the pole yet. So uh, they've really had their growth stunted and uh, I'm going to be lucky if I get even uh, a plate full of beans out of this. You see there, those beans, yo, I mean, they should be four times the size of this. And uh, the reason they're not is that they keep getting nibbled back. I've put wire around them now and this is a little bit like uh, bolting the stable door after the horse has bolted. Next year I need to probably work with either fleece or netting to put around my wigwams to keep deer off as much as I possibly can and probably also use the wire around that. Then hopefully I will get a bean crop for this year. Jane and I were in a bit of a competition for uh, growing beans this year. Well, Jane, I think you win. <laughs> I'm going to show you the good, the bad and the ugly. Now, these here are my Sarpo Miro. And, well, there's green there. The thing is, 
When I came down here earlier, they all looked as if they've died back like that. Now, I've got some that are starting to recover, uh, having given them water, and uh, this is very much a case of uh, the last rites, I think, for some of those potatoes, which is a bit of a shame. Now, I had wood chips on the top of the buckets, and I was interested to see how much more the, uh, the buckets could go. Quite clearly, they can't go a month. Um, it's okay, I've got enough potatoes there that I'm gonna do all right. I'm not gonna have the massive crop that I was hoping for, um, but I've learned something uh, more about using wood chips uh, as a layer at the top of buckets. And it does help because, I mean, in a month, leaving everything alone, really and truly everything should be dead and not everything is dead. So uh, I'm still happy because I'm learning things and uh, I, c I can put this into practice for next year. With the failure of many of the beans, I've kind of tried something out here, which is to uh, try a climbing squash and see if I can get that up the pole. Um, it's probably not going to come to much, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. One of the things that I am really pleased about is uh, because I was absolutely convinced, uh, this is one of uh, Roland's um, giant pumpkins, which he sent to me via Peter, Peter Edwards. And I thought I'd killed it, but as you can see, this really wanted to live. Even better, if you see under there, I've actually got a pumpkin set and that's starting to grow. So that's really, really exciting. Um, I was beginning to think I wouldn't have a pumpkin this year, but uh, as long as I look after this, I might have something quite special. The rhubarb's starting to die down now. We've had plenty off this, and I'm wondering if I might even be, still be able to take some off. But uh, I know that you have to give it time. I'm particularly proud of this. This is another one from Roland, and it was again sent to me by Peter Edwards. Now this is a variety of courgette, it's a climbing courgette, and it's called Tromboncino. And it has really huge courgettes, and uh, if you see, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in, and uh, then you can see this one, but uh, they grow absolutely huge. And I've managed to get it to grow, and it's doing well. So hopefully we're gonna have some uh, giant courgettes this year. And uh, when I get those, I'll show you because they really are quite spectacular. So as you see, I've got some weeding to do. Now, this is a tool that I've uh, come up with, which is a weeding knife. And that blade is about six, seven inches long. Uh, this is from Wolfgarten. It's got that very distinctive Wolfgarten yellow and uh, red handle to it. And what I'm finding is that uh, as I go through and pull these uh, weeds out, is that because you've got the layer of wood chip, that what's happened underneath is that the soil has not been come compacted. And what's happening is that the weeds are pulling out an awful lot easier. And so what I'm able to do is to pull back the wood chips, put the weeding knife in, and I'm getting out more of the mare's tail so that hopefully it will stay gone a little bit longer. And that's the onion bed that's now been uh, weeded out of all the mare's tail. To get completely around this area, it actually took me uh, a good few hours, but uh, it's come out really, really well. And uh, everything's looking, I think, really healthy. I've got some quite fat Kelsies down there, and they're really coming along. There are the Stuttgarter giants that are ready to come out. At the back, there is my garlic. The tops of my garlic, I was expecting them to get scapes. And the reason that I haven't pulled these yet is because I was waiting for the scapes to come through so that that would tell me when was a good time to uh, pull everything up. But no scapes so far. I think I might try some of these and see when would be uh, good and if they're ready yet. 
One of the things I have had to contend with is rabbits digging, and I think there may be deer digging as well. That's something I'm going to have to think about for next year, and I need to protect my crops better than I have for this year. But in terms of how this is doing, I mean, I haven't watered this bed at all. This has only had rainwater. If I pull away the wood chips, the ground is moist, and you can see these plants are not suffering from lack of water. So this has really, really worked. I'm so pleased. <laughs> Some of these onions, as I've been uh, weeding, are actually uh, now starting to uh, look as if they're ready. And again, with the, the Back to Eden method, you know, it stops soil compaction. Now, everybody says that when you lift onions, what you need is a spade and you should never pull onions up. Well, this is one of my onions that I've pulled up. And uh, you can see that because the soil is not compacted around it, you know, I can just get a handle on uh, the stem and it pulls out beautifully. And that's been the same with all of them. And I have to say that these are some of the best onions I've ever grown. Now, that's not to say that I'm an expert onion grower, but for the first time I'm seeing onions that are looking at the sort of size that I would be happy buying in the supermarket. They're not just sort of the little excuses for things. So, as far as the onions is concerned, that this Back to Eden method really is working. And so that's it, we've looked around now. Um, it didn't take too much work to uh, get that horrible mess of weeds sorted out. And considering how little weeding I have done, I think I've been let off quite lightly this year. But as you can see, some things are happening, some things I've got to learn for next year. And uh, there's always the, uh, the local wildlife that are taking care of things and I need to work with them so that I get a decent crop. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time and I won't leave it as long as this time on the allotment. Goodbye. <laughs>